What's up everybody? Welcome back. I hope you guys had a great weekend. Uh, I did. I spent my weekend getting ready for some stuff that's happening this week and I am really excited. This video is going to be all about peaks, uh, specifically peaks from a certain book. So we're going to be talking about some peaks from this book right here. This is the Arthur Buckley card control book. If you don't know this book, you should definitely check it out. I'll leave a description in the link below for you to possibly get it if you want to learn some more stuff because this book is jam packed full of good stuff. Let's just get right into the peaks and have some fun figuring out what people are looking at. What are you looking at? Who are you? Why are you here? You look at me, eh? You wish I was naked, eh? I am not naked. Bad for you. Try to look at my pong pongs. Are you? There is nothing here for you. This is for me. So before we go any farther about the peaks, I'm just going to show you a little bit about this book because this book is amazing. So uh, Arthur Buckley Card Control, there's a Dover book so you know it should be pretty easy to get a hold of, it's not too expensive. Chapter 1 and it's just got a list of things and then there's chapter 2 over here and it's just so many good things in this book. Oh God, so much to do, in fact I should probably look through this. Again, to be honest, we're going to be talking about peaks. Now, a peak is basically a way to see a card secretly. So, a glimpse, peak, you know, whatever you want to call it. Basically, it's just a way to look at cards or find the identity of a card by looking at it without knowledge that you're doing it. So, you know, you're not outwardly saying, I'm looking at this card, you know? So, we're going to go over two of the peaks. And then that will be it. We'll talk about a few other things later on, but let's just get right into the peaks. Now, I know it's kind of hard to see a peak on camera. So I'm gonna show you one of the peaks that we're gonna go over. That's this one right here. Now, I actually have a monitor on my camera so I can actually see what's happening, but trust me when I tell you I'm not looking at it. Okay? So you just come over here, you say, have your spectator say stop. Okay? After they take a look at it, you hand them the deck and as you oh. this is what I get for trying to be fancy. Oh, let me pull out a new deck of cards. Oh, I'm cool, Mr. Magic. You don't need to break them in. That'd be awesome. So you go like this, they stop. Okay. As you go to put the cards down, you pick the cards. That one was the Ten of Hearts. And it's not too difficult. The harder part about it is actually doing it in a motion that doesn't allow you to, doesn't allow your spectator to know you're actually looking at it. So here's what's really going on. It's quite simple. The hardest part is the choreography, which we'll go over later. You hold your cards up in this kind of fashion. If you've never done a peek, it's easier if you bevel the cards. So if you if you know how to do a pinky count or if you've ever seen me teach a pinky count, I tell you to bevel the cards in towards your thumb. For a riffle peak, if you're a right-handed person like me, you're actually gonna do the opposite. You're gonna bevel it out so that you get a nice soft edge on both sides. Now you're going to pivot this up so that they can see the indexes of the cards or indices, Mwah, words. And you're going to riffle like this. Now I'm holding pressure with my thumb. I'm not really holding anything else. I'm just kind of squeezing it like this. And you just riffle through as you tell them to say stop as you riffle through. So they riffle through, they say stop. When they say stop, you're gonna take your pinky and you're just going to throw it in like that. Now, once you're here, this is where it all starts to happen. Now, you don't have to do this right away. You don't have to immediately go right into the peak. So instead, what you should do is hold the break. Now, you're holding the break above their selection. Talk for a minute, say something, don't forget your card, remember it. In fact, uh, why don't you shuffle the deck? And as you go to hand them the card, your hand is going to pivot over like this. And as it pivots over, these fingers are going to do a few actions. One, you're going to kick the entire thing over on the break and then pivot over. Now, if you look, there's the selection right there. So I was kind of doing it slow to show you, but I'll show you what I mean. So here's the seven. As you go to tilt your hand over, you're going to kick over that whole block and then your thumb is going to kick the whole thing over and a card will be sticking out. And that is the peaked selection right there. As you turn it over and hand it to them, your hand's gonna come towards them. Now, as it goes towards them, you're gonna do the kick over, hand it towards them, and then place it in their hand. 
Here's the tricky part. I can't do it here because I don't have somebody to control my camera, but really what you're going to do is you're going to bring the cards up towards your eyes. So if I if I come down to here, hi, <laughs> if I come down to here and I hand you the cards, right, it's harder to tell that I'm peeking a card because it's at my eye. So the mistake a lot of people make with this is they, they get their peek like this and then they look straight at the cards as they're doing this move and it becomes very obvious that they're looking at a card. So bring the cards up towards the eye as you hand it to them and that'll cover the whole action. Now, as you get better with this, you can actually do as much smaller like this so it's not that big of a step. Uh, the way I'm showing you right now, it's literally going up <laughs> quarter of the way. You know, so when you turn it over, you have this big thing but you don't need that whatsoever. So you come here, you say stop, so talk for a second, you come up at the eye, hand them the cards, and you've already peaked the Ten of Clubs. So that's one peak for you to play with, practice it, bring your hand up towards the spectator's eyes as you do the peak, and you should be just fine. So the next peak that I'm going to show you is a little bit different. This one is more of a gambler peak. It's something that you could probably use more at the card table or if the cards are in your hands and you don't need to hand the cards out for anything. And it's a good way to cite the top card also. Mind you, this is just for the top card. So if you have a card in the middle, you're not gonna use this peak. If you have a card at the bottom, you're not gonna use this peak. This is for a card that's at the top of the deck that you want to find the identity of. Whether you wanna keep it to yourself. So let's say the Ace of Hearts is a card I wanna keep, but I wanna keep it. And, and I know that it's there, so after I peek it, I could do a second deal or something because I know it's there. I don't have to think about it too much. So here's how the peek works. Once you get the card on top or a selection or if you just need to know, this is very, very simple. This is going to go by super quick and maybe I'll even add in one more as a bonus. You're going to kind of clamp down with your index finger and middle finger like this. And then your thumb is going to push. Now, mind you, this will also only work for a right-handed person. If you're left-handed, this peak will not work. It just won't. Previous peak can because the index is just on the other side and you can still see it, but this peak will not work for a left-handed person. So if you're lefty, sorry you miss out. You're going to kind of clamp down with these fingers in this position, then you're going to take your thumb and you're just going to push. Now what that does is it causes this to buckle. See that? Now that's not the peak because the peak actually happens in this kind of position. You don't want to do this like this and then kind of look over in at the card like that. This peak happens in this position. So as you're talking or something, you kind of just lean forward and, and pop that open. And now you see my index finger is kind of blocking that bubble there. So I can see right in, I know it's going to be kind of hard to see it, but I can see right into the index which is the four spades right there. Ooh, nice little bend. You don't want to do it for too long either. <laughs> so as you're talking, just say, you know what, do me a favor, can you just pull out your wallet? And I know the top card is the four hearts. So if you want, you can just kind of say, you know what, uh, can, you, can you do me a favor and just kind of open your wallet for a second? And right there, the four hearts, right? You don't have to do a huge action. You just need to kind of misdirect, push in, see the card and come back. And you've done the whole action. So there's two peaks for you. I'll give you one more as a bonus. We'll get into that in a second, but what I will say is, as you're doing these peaks, remember you don't want to, to do things that are too obvious that you're peeking the card. I know there's some other people who use this kind of bubble peak differently. I'm not gonna go into it. I will say if you ever meet somebody called Howard Hamburg, he has a really nice touch on it. Let's get into the third peak. That's your freebie. And then we'll talk about some stuff. Okay, so unfortunately this last peak also only works for a right-handed person. There are other peaks you can do for a lefty that are a little easier, but this is what's in that book and I'm sharing that with you. So this is what it is. So essentially you're going to pivot over the top card and push it over your thumb like this. So it's kind of hard to see, right? That's why these peaks work so well, but I can see that that is the four of hearts, right? So really the peak kind of kind of goes like this. Now I could peak, this is the third card from the top, right? So the third card from the top is the two of hearts. See that? So depending on how many cards you want to peek, you can do that. You can actually spread a few cards over. So let's say two, right? So there's two, 
there's the ace of hearts. And these peaks are, are gambler peaks, but these peaks can be done in a wide variety of places as long as you have the right choreography. If I just kind of come here and I say, just can you give this a riffle shuffle? And I just kind of bring my hands forward. I can now see two cards actually. I can see two of them instead of just one. So you can use this technique to, to see multiple cards at once instead of just one and get more steps ahead of your spectator. Just kind of pull up with your thumb a number of cards. If you just want one, just kind of pull up with one, kick that card over. You can use your middle finger if you want to kick it over and push it up against the fat of your thumb, just like that. And I mean, you can see the, the card from there, but from where I am, I have to move my hand out and do something, right? So if I do this, now I can get my peek up. If I just kind of bring my hands into a certain position. The last thing you want to do is move your head to try to see the card. Try to move your hands towards the eye so that you can get a better position, okay? Bring your hands up towards the eye, not your eyes down towards the hand. That's just a big word, don't do it. All right, so those are the peaks. I figured I'd go over a little bit of the choreography just so you kind of have an idea of how these things should be done. Let's go over the first one, then we'll go over the second or third one, then we'll be out. Anyway, the first one, as you riffle, you say stop. If my hand would be lower for this usually. I kind of do this with my head turned, my arms kind of comfortably at a shoulder position, not so much this high. This is just kind of awkward to do a peek at. But if you just kind of do it down here and you angle the cards up and you peek it, you know, let them peek it, they can get the card. So you let them say stop, they peek a card, you come back. Now, it's, it's kind of weird if you just bring your hand up and, and hand them the cards. We say, do me a favor, hold your hand out for me. And now you come up and do it. Now this is okay, because you're kind of showing them what they're grabbing, and you bring it down. So as you, as you go to do that, your hand will turn over right into the line of sight. I can see the card, and then you put the cards in their hand. So that's just a little tip on the first one. Uh, as for the other two, they're really dependent on your physical action at that moment. If you're trying to get a glimpse at the top card, you might think about blocking it for a second. So if you're going to do that bubble peek, maybe block for a second as you do something. So you say, do me a favor, hold your hand up. Now, as I'm saying, hold your hand out, right? I'm, the cards are almost at my eye level and the peak is behind my hand, right? So there's a lot of ways like that you can do that using a spread of cards, using your hand behind something, maybe reaching for something and looking down into your pocket and glimpsing the peak. There's a lot of ways you could you go about it. The third one is probably the most difficult of them all only because of the type of peak it is. This is a very strange kind of gambler peak. You can do it, you can use it. I just wanted to put it in there just to show you the, the variety of styles of peaks that are out there. There are many, many more. There's more in that book. You should definitely check that out. Anyway, give me a thumbs up if you liked the video. Leave a comment below. Uh, tell me how you would use a peak. Uh, that'd be kind of interesting. I want to know what you guys do with this information as well. And I will see you guys in the next video. And don't forget, this week I will be releasing my pass. And I also have a special edition from Alex Pandrea as well. So thanks a lot, guys. And I'll see you guys in the next video. This is what I get for trying to be fancy. Oh, let me pull out a new deck of cards. Oh, cool, Mr. Magic. You don't need to break them in. It'd be awesome. <laughs>